Hello friends. Today we'll talk about A.G. Gardiner's famous essay on the rule of the road. Alfred George Gardiner was born on 2nd June 1865 and died on 3rd March 1946. He was a renowned British author, a newspaper editor and also a journalist. He was born in Chelmsford. He worked for Chelmsford Chronicle and Bournemouth Directory. He joined the Northern Daily Telegraph in 1887 and later on Blackburn Weekly Telegraph in 1899. He has written under the pseudonym Alpha of the Plough. His essays are written under his own initials too are well known. The daily life of English and the common issues in their lives stand at the core of his writings. His famous works include Prophets, Priests and Kings, Pillars of Society, The War Lords, Pebbles on the Shore, Windfalls, Leaves in the Wind, The Anglo-American Future, What I Saw in Germany, Letters from Germany and Austria, Life of George Cadbury, The Life of Sir William Harcourt, Many Pharaohs, John Ben and Progressive Movement, Portraits and Potents and Certain People of Importance are also among his important writings. The present essay deals with the importance of adherence to law and order and appropriate and civilized behavior. It also speaks about the necessity of certain restrictions on individual liberty to keep others' freedom intact to the betterment of society. This essay appeared in Gardiner's anthology entitled Lives in the Wind. It was published under his pseudonym Alpha of the Plough. The author begins his essay by narrating a jolly story which Mr. Arthur Ransom told in his message from Petrograd. Petrograd is renamed as St. Petersburg now. It is a city in Russia. It is the story of an old stout lady who was walking with a basket down the middle of street in Petrograd. The lady was told that pavement was the place for the foot passengers, that is, footpath was the place for the foot passengers, but the red lady replied, I am going to walk where I like. We have got liberty now. The author comments that it did not occur to the dear old lady that if liberty entitled the foot passengers to walk down the middle of the road, it also entitled to the cab driver to drive on the pavement and that the end of such liberty would be universal chaos. Everybody would be getting in everybody else's way and nobody would get anywhere. Individual liberty would have become social anarchy. It means that in order that the liberties of all may be preserved, the liberties of everybody must be curtailed. The policeman who steps in the middle of the road and puts his hand up is actually not the symbol of tyranny but of liberty. Any reasonable person would understand that if the policeman doesn't do so, Piccadilly Circus would be a maelstrom that you would never cross at all. The author comments that you have submitted to a curtailment of private liberty in order that you may enjoy a social order which makes your liberty a reality.
Liberty, according to author, is not a personal affair only, but a social contract. It is an accommodation of interests. I may be as free as I like in the matters which do not touch anybody else's liberty. We are free in the personal matters which do not touch anybody else's liberty. These are personal matters like dyeing one's hair or wearing a tall hat. People may look at the person who is wearing a fancy clothes and they are at liberty to laugh at him. But the person also has the liberty to ignore such people. These are the matters like how we would prefer to cook food at our home, what religion to follow or the subject like marriages in all. These matters we behave according to our wish. This is the kingdom of our liberty in which we rule independently. But we step out of this kingdom if we disturb others. We can play musical instruments whenever and wherever we like. But if that sound disturbs the neighbors, we are misusing our liberty. Our liberty must not interfere with the liberty of the others. We have to understand that there are a lot of people in the world and we have to accommodate our liberty to their liberties. The author narrates an incident in a railway journey. The narrator was reading a book quietly. It was a serious book, but a fellow traveler began talking loudly and the author was unable to concentrate on the book. He could not ask the passenger to speak in a low tone. The person would not have liked it. But the person should have taken care not to disturb anyone with his talk. This person had no social sense according to the author. Proper social conduct is based on a reasonable consideration for the rights or feelings of others according to the author. Author feels that women are less civilized than men. According to him, a woman who is well dressed would thrust herself in front of a man in the queue at the ticket office. Woman does so because men do not oppose her and men do not break the queue. A man is better trained in social behavior than women, according to the author. The author believes that the rights of small people and quiet people are also important and they should be preserved as the rights of small nationalities are preserved. Some people deliberately use the loud horn for bullying others. This is like the bullying of a small nation like Belgium by a big nation like Germany, according to Arthur. Bullying others is not the civilized way. It is an improper behavior like harassment of smaller nations by big nations like Prussia. A person who has brought a gramophone and played the song loudly on Sunday afternoon has disturbed all the surrounding people. This, according to Arthur, is not the civilized conduct. William Hazlitt said that a person who wants to learn the musical instrument like trombone has a right to learn it at his own home, but he should try to create minimum disturbance. He should practice the trombone in his attic and should keep the windows closed. Similarly, if one would like to play the gramophone at the house, that person should keep the volume low so as not to disturb the neighbors. Disturbing the peace of others is like going to the gardens without invitation and trampling the flower, their flower beds. Sometimes it becomes difficult to decide whose liberty is important. The narrator's friend does not like street pianos and whenever he finds them, he orders them away. But there is an old lady who loves to listen to music played on the street piano. Both of them have a liberty either to listen to and not to listen to the street piano. It is difficult to decide whose liberty is more important. The world is complex and we should try to find a balance between individual liberty and social liberty. The rule of the road is an example of the social rules that we need to follow. It is true that all of us have liberty, but we should also understand our responsibility. 
Our responsibility is to see that the others are not harmed or disturbed or troubled because of our behavior. The present essay speaks about the importance of social liberty. People give up a small amount of individual liberty in order to preserve collective liberty. People agree to obey traffic laws. They give up some liberties to maximize the liberty of all to drive in a safe and efficient fashion. We give up our desire to steal or to murder because we want that others should not steal from us or murder us. Hence, the social liberties can only be guaranteed by collective agreement to surrender certain individual liberties. Speaking about his ideological stand, the author says, I suppose that we cannot be neither complete anarchist nor complete socialist in this complex world, or rather we must be a judicious mixture of both. We have both liberties to preserve our individual liberty and our social liberty. We must watch the bureaucrat on the one side and one of the anarchist on the other. I am neither a Marxist nor a Tolstoyan, but a compromise. I shall not permit any authority to say that my child must go to this school or that, shall specially in science or arts, shall play a rugger or saucer. These things are personal. But if I proceed to say that my child shall have no education at all, that he shall be brought up as a primeval savage or at Mr. Fagin's academy for pickpockets, then society will tell me that it is of no use and my child must have a certain minimum of education whether I like it or not. I cannot have the liberty to be a nuisance to my neighbors or make my child a burden and a danger to the commonwealth. In short, we need to understand the proper meaning of the word liberty. It should not be taken to the extreme and it should not be used for creating problems for the others. It should be used for the social harmony. This is one of the interesting essays by A.G. Gardiner. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you. Subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you get the notification of the next video as soon as it is uploaded.